My name is Ray Such. I'm the uh, the host of uh, the Indie Gathering, the creator of the concept, the Indie Gathering, and that is a situation, a, a film festival and convention. That's a situation where we all get together and we don't have to travel back and forth to theaters and places and this and that. And we stay together, we party together, we talk together, but above everything, we network together. I, uh, someday I'd love to write a book on networking because for a filmmaker, there's no system in place that puts all these resources over here and all these producers and directors over here and brings them together. And, and if you're a filmmaker, I, I really, you can live anywhere and be a filmmaker and another filmmaker lives five blocks from you and you don't know it, and he's shooting ten blocks from your house and you don't know it. So, <coughs> to, uh, whether you're talking about location, props, this, that, and whatever, and you specialize yourself and you're a jack of all trades, which I am, um, you still want to be able to do the, uh, put everything together the easiest possible way. Uh, so. Even though this is lectures on location, it's, it's giving you a sense of uh, being a producer and locations. So I'll mix that sense of uh, being a producer to uh, of my lecture. Um, I started this concept uh, actually 15 years ago. No, it's the 18th. Uh, would be 20 years ago. The first year it was held at a bar. And, you know, and, and, and it's the same thing with producing. I went to the bars. I said, what's your slowest night? Oh, and the best is, of course, if they got a Sunday liquor license and they're not open on Sunday. Well, I'm going to bring you a cash bar. Can we use your place? I have yet to been refused from a bar. Uh, and, and again, producing locations it's your personality that's going to get this. It's the way you word it, the way you approach the person. You know, if you, if, hey, I'm, I'm a movie producer, director, I, I'd like to use your bar. Cha-ching! You approached it wrong. So anyways, um, the first thing I usually do is check with all my uh, stunt students, acting students, and ask them, hey, what bars do you go to and what owners do you know? <laughs> We'll start that way uh, with an introduction. But anyways, it started at the bar. We outgrew that the first night. Then we moved it to a nightclub. And uh, uh, think about this. Any of you ever wanted to start a, a um, and even if you didn't want to start a film festival, you get a nightclub that's got a, a, um, a Sunday license that's not open. You get them to open you, to bring a cash bar. You borrow a projector and a screen and everything. You have your family and friends make up some entrees or whatever and put it out there. And you you do it, uh, uh, Mara, what, what's your city name? Jersey City. Jersey, uh, uh, Jersey City's film networking party, annual networking party. And you bring all the indie filmmakers in and you know hey you got some club just almost like they what they do nationally with an indie club well anyway we started at a bar we went to a nightclub <laughs> overpacked then we went we did it in march of every year in cleveland and god you don't want to live in cleveland in march <laughs> um you think if you're in the spring and close and you're not um we did it at the Huron Grill downtown Cleveland that had a capacity of 600 people on the third one. And it had it, that day had a snow blizzard on a Sunday and the snow was going this way. Not this way, but this way. And we had um, 700 people in there and probably maybe about three or 400 people that were stuck on roads everywhere, calling on the, the phones and everything. Um, had a blast. Always get a great uh, band to volunteer to play. Um, so you can start your own networking type thing annually to bring resources to you, you know, for a sense of producing. Think about it, an annual networking party for your city or that. Um, so anyways, and then the, the 
And the fourth one, we had to move to an hotel. It just got so much. So, and they were they weren't coming from Cleveland like it started. They were coming from Pennsylvania and Michigan. My idea of a film commission in your area, my area, is not a bunch of people from LA flying into my city, doing a project, cutting checks, everybody putting their checks in their pockets and flying back to LA. And they have $75 uh, 14 hour a day extra positions. And now I got a city full of, I'm an actor, I'm an actor. I was in, I was in uh, 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 the Avengers, I was an actor. Okay, but anyway, I came up with a concept of, man, everybody going, you know, Wes Craven grew up in, in Cleveland. When he was about nine years old, he suffered from night terrors. And his psychologist told him to start writing down his dreams. He made a damn career out of it. But uh, they don't shoot in downtown Cleveland or New York City. They start, shoot in small towns. Almost any script, in some sense, could be rewritten in the sense of putting it into a small town. Okay? So, anyways, he had that idea. I approached the first city in Ohio called Shelby, Ohio. It is 40 five to an hour south of Cleveland. It's right out, it's north of Mansfield. It's got a main street, which is one traffic light there. And there may be one more down that way and one more down that way, and they got the side streets and everything. Uh, it's, it's just a nice little town. So I went and approached, and you can do this too, actually. You can start your own damn film commission in your area, even if they have incentives, tax incentives. You approach a small city through a friend who might know the mayor or a councilman and say, hey, look, they're not going to come down here with a $5 million budget or anything, and there's a lot of independent films that are under these different caps where you, you've got to make so much. So, you know, you bring them to your town, they eat, they buy gas, they do this, they do that, bring them to your city. So the first town I got was Shelby, Ohio, because I, done, I did a training video down there, and it just, it was just wild fun, and it was just like everybody in this city, oh man, can I be in it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I, I went down there and I talked to the mayor, and I says, look, we're a volunteer group. We're filmmakers that created a board. Uh, I'm the commissioner, and we, we, we volunteered to do this. So what we're gonna do, is we're going to promote your city to independent filmmakers and student filmmakers. And when you're talking to this individual, you say, look, what's the difference between Wes, Wes Craven and a young blue jean t-shirt, uh, or not so young, <laughs> independent filmmaker? What's the difference? Uh, the experience? No, it's somebody else's money. It's called a budget. Oh, I get it. Admit it. You're the one who killed him. You seduced him. Gained his confidence. And then when he wasn't looking, you reached into your purse, and without conscience or remorse, you pulled out a gun and shot him. And cut. Curious? Visit theindiegathering.com, a film festival, and so much more. In today's world, there is an absolute need to know how to protect yourself. But who has the time or money for lengthy training sessions with techniques you may not remember in a time of need or which can wind up putting you in even more danger? With Escape and Survive, you will learn effective, easy to remember techniques for getting out of dangerous situations. No complicated moves, no expensive, time consuming training. Just common sense self defense. Book your seminar today at escapeandsurvive.com.
I tell the, the cities, listen, if, if, if he comes down here as a student filmmaker, he shoots a, uh, a microfilm, a five minute short. In a sense, that's his business card. Or a short film, that's his business card. It goes out there, and an investor in general looks at, wow, that's great. What was your budget? Uh, for the whole short film? Yeah. Uh, I think it came to $850. Whoa! Now, if I was an investor, I'm thinking, Christ, I wonder what he could do with a half mil. I see what he can do with $800. I want to see what he can do with a half million. There's your investors. Too many young filmmakers get a, a, an investor and, I got the money, wham! Any investor that comes to you in any line of investment, I mean, you can find a damn dentist to invest 5,000. That dentist should know five other dentists when you're down here, okay? So what did you do? You created your own investment group. And so you not got 25,000 for your, your video or whatever. If you got to work on the concept. They got to get their money back or they got to make something on this because damn it, I got to go to mine here. I'm not just blowing that money, okay? So anyways, I go to the city and I said, hey, even a student filmmaker because someday you want him to come back when he's got his budget, somebody else's money. That's our world. So Shelby, Ohio said, uh, the mayor said, fine, let me take it in front of council. Okay, done deal. We're a member of the North Coast Film Commission, volunteer group. Then I went to Millersburg. It's between Cleveland and Columbus. Completely Amish. But if you're ever going to do a period horror film of the Civil War, I have had meetings with all the antique dealers. We'll rent cheap anything we've got for props. Okay? And because I talk to these people, when you're, when you're looking for locations, I, or, or even stuff for films, I talk to them and I said, look, what's that Victorian thing cost? $125. Well, if you rented it for $25 for the, for the weekend, what's it going to cost on Monday for the selling it? $125. Don't you get an extra 25 bucks? So I talked to, in these towns, I've talked to the... Uh, uh, the merchants and everything. And I explained to these cities that we have now and the mayors and had meetings with the people. You know, you don't have a catering firm in here? Well, damn it, can't you get eight housewives together? And man, they're delivering the food and catering for your film shoot. You know, like we got stuffed cabbage, mashed potatoes, blah, 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 rolls and everything. And they, these women show up with their cars and set up your thing. And you're not talking with a, a, a commercial catering firm. But my idea for filmmaking, no matter if I'm doing it for the Sci-Fi Channel or if I'm doing it for 850 bucks out of my pocket, okay, a short, I'm looking for how my money can go toward the film and making the film better, blah, 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 without spreading it all around across the board. Bingo. I've got the best locations. No small town is going to give you every location. But if I start stringing, and we're actually talking to uh, uh, one city that's actually on the Ohio River down there, you know, like, a, who is that? What was that film in Pittsburgh where they were on the river and that guy was a cop? Uh, and they were in the boats, um, speedboats. Oh, the guy that did Die Hard. Did, or, uh, no, um, yeah, Die Hard. Yeah, striking did. distance. Yeah. Striking distance. Okay, they use, shit, everybody uses Pittsburgh. If you're going to film something in West Virginia, you use Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> use, on a river, you use Pittsburgh. Um, and they got a great hub. Anyways, uh, being someone that puts all these resources together, uh, okay, so now we have the North Coast Film Commission. Three, and we're talking with two more. One of them is um, uh, out where the Coliseum used to be, Rich, Rich, Richfield Township. They have a working steam 
railroad stop. It's on that scenic railroad that comes from Cleveland down through to uh, almost Canton. But they have the railroad station in uh, um, that city. So that's what that location. And of course, you're not going to find other small cities, but close by. So we're, they're coming in. So anyways, now let's go back to Shelby. Just to give you an example. Independent film shot most of their locations. Now we got the uh, uh, Shelby. They said, look, Ray, I, the only thing I need left is a, a restaurant, uh, an old gas station, not a commercial one, an old gas station, and then I need a school building. Now remember, he's got no budget. A school building inside and outside. Okay, now you're like dealing with the school boards and whatever. Okay. And he needed a Victorian, a spooky Victorian home that he can take a body out of. And he says, Ray, you got any suggestions for taking the body out? I said, yeah, if you use two of the regular black trash bags together this way, you know, you can have a crew guy lay down and they can carry him out around there, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I sent the request to our representative in Shelby. He came back with eight to nine photographs of each location. Wow. Take your pick. So they did it online and they said, oh, that school building, that restaurant, uh, uh, oh, that's a dilapidated gas station. Not that one. Uh, oh, yeah. beautiful big white Victorian house. And at night, it'll look great. Not that one. Okay. I called the city. I said, that one, that one, photo number, boom, 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 boom. Uh, they said, when did they, when, when did they want to shoot? Okay. When do you want to shoot? Could we do it all in one day? <laughs> Call back. They'd like to do it all in one day. What time did they want? You know, so I don't want to bombard the uh, um, commission with Indies calling them and everything. So I, we handle it. So... Okay, they set it up from 8 a.m. To, to show up at the Victorian house at midnight. Okay, gas station. Oh, by the way, the city also is linked with the local paper, and we're linked with the local paper, so we supply all the extras and everything, and the city's going crazy over it. I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. Uh, when, they, when we approach the bar, we tell the bar owner, hey, look, what's your slowest day? Okay, Monday night or whatever, or that particular day, hey, we're going to bring you a cash bar. And by the way, if you've got some, you know, favorite customers, invite them. We're going to put them in a bill. Uh, and some of you I see, I, I won't say who or what, but, you know, you can think on the no money budget to think on what I might have as a budget. Okay, so I'm trying to stay as much here. But you can get the concept of what I'm talking, which is going to apply to where your budget is here. And oh my God, I'm, I'm, you know, if my budget's a million, I'm coming out with. I honestly think you could almost come out with a, close to a ten to one. Okay, my million dollar budget gets me a ten million dollar film. Welcome to Movie Outline 3, your first step to a successful screenplay. Movie Outline is powerful screenplay development software for both the amateur and the professional screenwriter, which uses the simple technique of step outlining to build your story, characters, and screenplay scene by scene. With Movie Outline, you can easily plan and customize your story structure, color code acts, rearrange scenes, develop and track characters, format your screenplay, and compare your own story to successful Hollywood movies. Movie Outline is the ultimate writer's tool.
Visit www.movieoutline.com to download the free demo today. Unlike some that have insurance, Shelby requests you as a student filmmaker or a, a young independent filmmaker to sign a release. You are responsible. And yet, even a small town has a city lawyer to go and sue you if you go and screw something up. So, I mean, you know, everything is done right when you have the money and you have the insurance. And when you're a young student filmmaker, you know, and you're over 18, and you're going to sign a contract with them, I don't, you know, I sign a release, any damage I'm responsible for. Again, you've got Millersburg, which is completely Amish area. You have, uh, I think their hotel on Main Street is, I'm, I'm guessing 1857 or so. And their rooms look it. So it's a, it's a great city for a period piece. Um, you know, one, one guy was saying, you know, I, 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 I had this idea of a uh, short film of where uh, it's, a, it's a little Civil War town and the, 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 uh, the ghosts of the Civil War fight come back and start terrorizing the city because the city was south and there are northerns that died there. So think of that concept. The ghosts were actually coming back to terrorize this town. Uh, right after the Civil War. But anyway, uh, locations are easy to do. It's one, if you have a location manager and you have a good budget, uh, somebody that can talk to them and has it in mind that, you know, if I was working for HBO, okay, as uh, they said, right, we need a scout, uh, you know, location guy, scout and everything and that, and get out there and we'll deal, we'll pay you this. I walk into a bar or I walk into a nightclub and I says, yeah, I'm a scout, I have this film, you know, oh, we got this big film and everything, we want to use your location and blah, 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 blah. Cha-ching, cha-ching, a cash register is starting to ring, you know? Your location scout or manager for a low buy or something like that should know how to deal with people. Bring you cash bar, got some favorite customers and everything. So now the guy is, oh, I got an HBO. Film being shot here, but it's not costing HBO, you know, two to three thousand a day, blah blah blah. Uh, homes, you know, uh, the rental, you know, up here right now we've got uh, draft day and that, and uh, uh, just so many things. So, anyways, Shelby, Ohio, Millersburg, the one on the the river uh, down there was. Uh, Franklin Burness. Never heard of the damn little town, but it's right on the Ohio River. So it's great to have some kind of a thing if you had a river scene and you needed it. But um, horror films, man, between Millersburg, Shelby, uh, uh, Fairport, I mean, their wood farms are, you know, 150 acre, you know, you want to use it, go ahead and use it. You want the forest part over there. Uh, we've got waterfalls, we've got things like that. Saving time, you will find us at NorthCoastFilmCommission.com. We have numerous, they have a private airport in Shelby. Use it. Try using Cleveland Hopkins. I want to know what your budget is. Okay, and yet you're not using the, you know, Oh, 707, you've got the small plane or whatever. They've got private planes down there. All of this can be worked out. Providing you don't go running down there waving money, hey, I'm making a film, you know, then ching, ching. They know, I've talked to them. Budget rules. I can give you this. Don't ask for more. If I have a bigger budget, I do give you more for that. I personally like to call it burning the budget. I want 
the most I can give to this executive producer, five times his money, ten times his money for the film, okay? But I'd rather give him ten times the film for his money and then turn around and hope he's going to go for an investment of more for the next one because he's going, well, damn it, if I, I did the mill, if I do five mill. Um, there's a lot of things putting together, but the film commission is not only these locations. It's me also with the resources from the Indie Gathering for 18 years, meeting you, meeting others, meeting you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you it is cheaper for you to fly in and come into Cleveland, okay, and let some of my stunt people or actors drive you to Shelby, have your room, and put 90 to 95% of what you need here. And a lot of young film students uh, in low budget, very low budget, film students that will volunteer and they're talented. You know, am I right about that, dear? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and you know, and these are these are ones that do the 48-hour film festival where you can go and check their seven-minute aggravation, got gray hair on that weekend for 48 hours work. Yeah. Well, so Ray, you've sold me on this idea because I think it's such an incentive for us to come up here and to to work with a lot of the young students you have. I mean, the ones that we've met this year, last year, or maybe the year before that, that we've seen. Yeah, my time. students will compete right. in the acting competition or the fight scene stunt. Right. right. Right now, if you had no budget but a Hollywood idea of kick-ass fighting zombies, but in this scene, you're talking about at least 150. I will go to seven of my friends with, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to uh, a good friend, Alan Tuskis, and then I'm not going to go say, hey, you want to volunteer for this, you know? But I have, do you realize the concept that I use? You know what I do at Halloween? I go nothing but from haunted house to haunted house, talking to these FX artists saying, did you ever do a movie? No, but I'd like to. Now, I'm dealing with his makeup work at the haunted house at about this distance with no lighting camera angle or anything. Holy shit. It looked good on set. Now, I, 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 I put together a bunch of teams, you know, to work on your FX for your zombies and everything. And, and, and a prop, you know what? And, and if we're talking about fight scene coordinating, all those zombies would be skilled martial arts black belts. Think of the concept of that. You know what I call that? Jean-Claude Van Damme technique. Not him. Not his acting ability or him personally. But that beautiful technique. That is sellable. That's what sold Blade. This August, come to the film festival where East meets West. It's an incredible showcase of over 75 films from around the world. And it's more than just a film festival. It's a place where filmmakers can gather together with the audience for one amazing weekend to celebrate the power, the drama, the joy, the magic of independent film. The Indie Gathering International Film Festival. It's so much more than you ever imagined. Are you a filmmaker looking for the location of your next project? Contact the North Coast Film Commission. With small cities throughout Ohio, we're here to help with your film, television, and commercial productions. With low to no cost permits and locations, we'll help stretch your budget. From our production resources to our talent database, we will show you just what the North Coast has to offer. Visit northcoastfilmcommission.com today. Um, 
locations. I will volunteer for you guys. I'll work as a middleman putting everything together for you. And I'll, I'll donate you, volunteer for you. I have my own 24-hour casting facility. You know, stunt coordinating producers. I have three Emmys. Uh, matter of fact, if you, you, know, if, you know, I'm in Little Cleveland. I'm in the low income west side area where 98% is Hispanic and I don't speak Spanish and I have my stunt school, martial arts school and acting school although Christina teaches most of the classes now um, but uh, I supply stunt people and uh, no matter, you know even in Virginia I know some of the old time studio owners I have resources these FX people that want to cross over, these film scorers around the world that want to cross over, the actors, you know, I will, I'll cast for you. Anybody got questions on locations? Um, the, uh, if you go to northcoastfilmcommission.com, we do have photographs of locations. Oh, Shelby has a 95% abandoned warehouse district wow. they're the the steel oh, type yeah. buildings that's cool they got them from like i think it they got from ten thousand or, or, or five thousand square feet to a hundred thousand square feet and 95 percent are all empty okay and there's photographs of the industrial area there did you say if they have electricity Gee, never thought of that. <laughs> Give me some time to get this all worked wow. out. <laughs> Gotta get a generator. We, we can get a yeah, generator. You know, uh, but anyway. I gave you that concept of Shelby. You know, they'll shut down the uh, intersection. Um, there's no cost permits. Um, they'll give you what you want. And having the report with them, when you're dealing with me, I, I, I'm the one making sure that, you know, like, when they wanted to shut down the intersection. You know, I said, well, how many people use that at night? Can we direct them around? Oh yeah, well, I guess we could do that. So, I mean, it's no problem whatsoever. And they're, they're, each city is tied into the newspaper for their extras and everything. So, uh, but acting-wise and, and stunt-wise, or, or casting calls, we can hold that up in Cleveland. They'll come up here, but with the, these, the Northeastern Ohio actors, which is a list of about 6,000 I have, email list, they'll, they'll, they'll come in. What were you going to say? I was going to say, do you, my new script that I'm working on, that I'm, my new feature I'm going to shoot next summer, has a scene that I'm trying to decide that I have to get rid of. But it's a traffic jam. The roads are completely stopped. And I, I originally envisioned it on the New Jersey Turnpike, which is un, un, unrealistic, but it could be on a side road. You, is that the kind of place where you could actually shoot something at well, night, where you blocked off a street with a bunch of cars stuck in a traffic jam? Yeah, it, it, and the Daily Globe and Shelby would put out a listing that we need 75 cars, that's you that's driving that's them, that's that's for your low income, yeah, no, or, or if I'm you're a writer, a talented writer. Think of the imaginary for writing around what you know you automatically have for nothing. Don't write a short film where you've got a deserted, closed down amusement park and you want to try to find a damn or a nuclear plant. Oh, Shelby has on Main Street the old electric building. You know they used to have these huge vats that they put coal into? And all the ironwork walkways above it and everything, they still have that. Uh, oh, they have the largest granary. Huge granary building and, and things. Uh, of course, in the middle of the grain season, you probably couldn't use the thing. Come up with ideas. As I get more of these cities, if you tell me, Ray, I, I didn't find it in Shelby, but I'd like this idea or that idea. And I start putting more of these cities together and representing them and that so I can piece everything together for you. Volunteer, you call me and just say, okay, well, I might have this project coming up. I could use like all this, 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 and then that. 
right? I mean, yeah. Uh, so clarification, no need for insurance uh, liability. For no, but you, you got to understand, you know, the, the, the city's lawyer is going to come after you if you blow up Main Street. <laughs> but I think you know, I, 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 no, wait a minute. I, you know, let's face it. If I can buy the insurance, it's the best for me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. 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 But, you know, but right now, if I ran downtown to do that, I can't afford it. Yeah. Okay? I'm just going to throw this in. We live in a small city, two by two uh, miles, whatever. We know, kind of know everybody because we live urban, whatever. So we, the mayor's in our neighborhood, and we live in a townhouse or whatever. Get to know the mayor. Get them. Get all those people. Give them a line. Give them a one-liner. Give them cameos, right? Yes. And then they'll do what you, oh, I get to be a movie. All right, got to wrap this up, but seriously. If you even have more ideas for this commission that I can expand the ideas of, I will. I have representatives in all the cities. I want to help you in any way because if, if even if you have a good budget, I want to see you back in three years with a even bigger budget. Or, unfortunately, back with no budget. Okay. <laughs> That's the reality. All right. Uh, my favorite. That's a wrap. <laughs>